With Heath gone, I just don't understand why I'm still watching this show. Well, what in Christ's name else is on? News 24, no thank you. I'm dead on my feet, I need to relax. But what have you been doing all day? I mean, I'll admit my life didn't change much because of the lockdown, but you're the only person I know whose life didn't change at all. Oh, don't be so silly. No, but really? <sighs> all right, I'll tell you what I've been doing, but it might make you angry. Well, maybe don't tell me then. I had a long talk to Andrea. Please, no. I asked you not to. Yes, yes, I know, but I thought you'd be glad that I did. And? On balance, you won't be glad that I did. Oh, super. <sighs> I always hoped you and Andrea would be like sisters. I don't see why. You don't like your sisters. Yes, well, my sisters are all girl bitches. But your father's side of the family are salt of the earth. Andrea is a lunatic. You only think she's sensible because she's a lawyer. Yes, exactly. She's a lawyer. Free advice. Well, what'd she say then? She thinks you should challenge Nora's will. Oh, pl oh, God, no. A will battle? Aside from anything else, are the courts even open yet? I'd have to hope not. You and Andrea are Nora's only living relatives, the old bag. Look, I bloody love money, but if she wanted to leave it all to the Bush Regeneration Fund, then that's what she wanted to do. OK? That's it. End of story. Sure, you could say that Australia has plenty of bush as it is, but whatever. Andrew thinks you have a case. Of course she does. Remember the time she wanted me to sue the Commonwealth Bank? Yes, yes, of course I do. And I think it was a shame you let those bastards get away with it. To be fair, all they did was stop me from using internet banking for the morning. Andrea just thought she was going to get on the news. Well, you, you could have been on the news. Uh, if they were doing a story about what life's like in debtor's prison. Plus, when Andrea did your conveyancing, you nearly ended up buying the wrong house. She was going through a breakup at the time. I don't care. She shouldn't have even been going out with Brad. He was, like, a head taller than her. It was a waste of a tall man. No, the trouble with Brad was that high voice, like a woman's. It was like that actor, McDreamy. Lovely blue eyes, but a very high voice. Yeah, shut your eyes, he could be a woman. Mm. By the way, Andrea told me Brad read romance novels. That's sort of sweet, isn't it? Well, it wasn't very romantic where Andrea was concerned. She told me that she gave him flying lessons for his birthday and he barely even said thank you. Well, flying lessons. Is he John Travolta? I was under the impression he had a carpet cleaning business. Plus, does anyone really want flying lessons for their birthday? It's one of those things people only think they want. Like a damn harbour bridge climb. And that's another organisation I hope's gone bust. Anyway, she was furious that he only gave her imperial leather body wash for her birthday. Well, she showed unusual restraint not suing him. I always really like the idea of wearing a wig and gown and swaying a jury. I don't think she's a wig and gown lawyer, though. She's probably barely a lawyer. <laughs> Do you remember when she was a... Singer, dancer, actress. Do I ever? She was finally doing something interesting with her life. It couldn't cause so much damage. And when it didn't work out as a singer, dancer, actress, Auntie Clem always thought she'd make a good anchor woman on a current affairs show. As if it's that easy. And Andrew didn't strike me as somebody who was very interested in current affairs. Anyway, and her head's too small for her body. It is not. I may not like Andrea, but I will say she is very good looking. Yes, but your head's the right size. And you could have been on TV. I've always thought you'd be a good female Bill Collins. Somehow I don't think that'd be any easier than becoming an anchor woman on a current affairs show. Well, then you better concentrate on winning this lawsuit then. You can buy me a bigger house. Hmm. And I've often thought how happy it would make Clem if you and Andrea saw more of each other. Meaning no disrespect. But Clem is dead and I have enough on my plate trying to satisfy the living. Oh, yes, of course, you mean me. For God's sake. Anyway, can you just be quiet for two minutes? Jason's going to sing Fire and Rain. I love it. I'm going to tell Kent to play it at my funeral. Everyone will be crying hysterically. This isn't that song about leaving a cake out in the rain, is it? It's the silliest song ever written. No, 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 the cake one's MacArthur Park, and yeah, it's mental. Oh, yeah, then your father used to roar with laughter over whiter shade of pale. Shh. What? The fire and rain's over already. How much of it did he sing, anyway? Oh, well, it's like Mel Gibson when he played Hamlet. He'd just get going on a speech and then it'd be all over. Did you ever see that? You saw it with me. Did I? Oh, I always thought I'd dragged your father along. He didn't want to see it. No, it was reversal of fortune Dad didn't want to go to. Remember, he kept making that joke about how it put him in a coma as well. You need the lawyer from reversal of fortune. Mm. 
Problem is, I don't think Alan Dershowitz does a lot of Australian probate cases. I guess you're stuck with Andrea then. Don't I know it. Oh, just give her a call. Why would I give her a call? Because I told her you would. Well, hopefully she'll forget about it like I will. Uh, the thing is, I told you you'd call tonight at 8.05. Why the precision? Is she the spy who came in from the cold? OK, I'm going now. Oh, what have you got to lose? Everything I own. I'm going now. Oh, could you just make your poor old mother happy, please? I'm going now and I'm never coming back.